Chair, that's the recording and the live stream back on. OK, thank you. So we were up members questions. I just want to make sure there are no further questions. OK, in that case, it's over to Mr McIver, if you wish to say anything in closing. Um, you can at this point, you can't add anything new, but if you have any comments to make in closing. And you did want to come in earlier, so. Thank you, Your Honour. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting there, sorry. Um, yes, I, I'm clearly not going to go over old ground, Your Honour, it's summing up, as you quite rightly say, so I would simply adopt, obviously, my principal submissions in the May. There, there are a, a couple of points that I do want to highlight, if I may, first of all. Um, I, as you correctly state, I, I did want to come in to respond to the LSO's comments. Um, to make it abundantly clear, uh, I can only assume that uh, Mr MacDonald has uh, misheard me, but at no time did I say that we were accepting that the persons involved in the number of the incidents that I referred to were intoxicated. What I did say was, I re in referring to the comments made by the police who referred to an intoxicated male or the like. That is not something we accept. And indeed, in terms of my submissions, I pointed out what had been observed in the CCTV footage, which Mr Hansen had reviewed, which showed that the persons involved in his view were not showing any signs of intoxication. So I just want to make that absolutely clear. It was not accepted by me uh, that the, these people were intoxicated. Now, moving on to the to the summary, you've heard you know the 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 the, the respective accounts, your honours. Uh, and in fairness to Sergeant Grant, he's made it clear that you know, his letter is based on and the, the comments made therein is based on the information coming back from them to the, the officers who attended, uh, you know, various incidents. Uh, clearly, um, the CCTV footage has been with Police Scotland for. I believe about 10 months or so. Um, and Mr. A. Hansen has, of course, seen uh, some of that, in fact, all of that CCTV footage. Uh, and that is, it is based on his observing of the CCTV footage, his response to the various uh, allegations made by the police, because it certainly shows a very different uh, light in many of the incidents to that which was reported back by the attending uh, officers. Uh, unfortunately, none of us here today have the benefit of that CCTV footage. So um, we're, we're having to make our respective submissions based on uh, the, 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 the uh, observations made on review of it by, by, Mr, by Mr Hansen. Um, secondly, um, even if it were to be accepted that every single incident that was narrated in the letter of complaint uh, happened exactly as is set out in the letter of complaint, which for the sake of the record, it's not accepted. It, that would be approximately one incident per month in a set of premises that has, as we've heard, 55,000 or thereby people crossing the threshold eh, over the period in question. Now, I would accept, of course, that in an ideal world, one incident in any licensed premises is one too many. That is perfection. Very rarely is perfection achieved. Uh, so what one has to look at is the way in which the premises have been operated for the past many, many years under Mr Hansen's uh, control and also uh, look at the steps that have been taken uh, moving forward uh, to, to ensure that the premises are run in an even more uh, perfect fashion. Now, I'm not going to narrate them all again. I gave you them the list in the uh, principal submissions, uh, but there are numerous steps which have been taken and continue to be taken by Mr Hansen to improve the operation of these premises. And that includes, as I said in my principal submissions, uh, training, refresher training, end of briefing, end of session briefings uh, and the like on a regular uh, basis. Um, the body cams we've spoken about, which one thinks would be of would be of assistance, um, all of these geared to ensure that the premises continue to uh, improve. Um, it's as I say, it's always difficult in, in these situations where um, there is a, a a difference of opinion on what happened in any on any given night. But the the, the additional point which one of the councillors, I think it may have been Councillor Croson, and I apologise if I've got that wrong, um, mentioned the question of, a, if I can use the term, a curfew uh, on, on entry. Uh, that is something which Mr Hansen is perfectly willing to, to consider. Um, we would suggest that a, a curfew of 2.30 
would be uh, appropriate if you are mindful to go down uh, that uh, route. Um, it's surprising that there have been these incidents all within the last, say, year, uh, contrasted with the previous 20 odd years of, of pretty much unblemished, unblemished trading uh, history. Um, difficult to see why that should be the case. Um, what, one point that um, is unfortunate, and this is no criticism, let me make that abundantly clear, no criticism of, of the police officers involved, but the fact of the matter is the number of police officers patrolling Peterhead these days is far less than it used to be in days gone by. Um, and the, the, you know, the, there's, no, um, there's not the same visual deterrent, if you will, when it used to be the case when you saw the police cars driving about or the officers walking about. And that's not criticism of Sergeant Grant or his colleagues, it's just a statement of fact. Um, so all of these things come together and end up at the door of the, of the license holder who has been doing his level best. And I think and I would hope you'd be reassured by the steps he is continuing to take, that he is a conscientious uh, person who's wanting his customers to have a good time in a safe environment and go home safely at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of the night. So when you take all of these things into consideration, Your Honours, in, in my respectful submission, um, what we would be inviting you to do is um, no more than than a written warning, um, as I said at the as I suggested at the outset. Uh, but uh, it, it failing that, there may be of course other matters which your honours wish to consider, and that that would be a matter for yourselves at the end of the day. But certainly, if there is any um, variation of the terminal hour for this business, then it. Um, seriously brings into question whether the business would survive and have addressed you about the finances of that and the impact of employees, employees, families, staff members and the like. A, a bit like Councillor Sullivan, with respect, I, I, I do find it um, slightly um, illogical to be requesting a, a cutback in hours when one looks at the um, timing of the events. However, one accepts what actually happened in the, in the times in question, uh, as many of them uh, are, are, are before uh, one o'clock in the one o'clock in the morning. Uh, so, Your Honours, uh, I would adopt everything I said in my principal submissions, and uh, it's a clear matter for yourselves, obviously, at the end of the day, to come to to come to a, a, a conclusion. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. McIver. Uh, it's the turn now of the LSO, Mr. McDonald. Do you wish to say anything in closing? Um, just to perhaps correct um, Ms Sullivan's point in regarding the um, incidents happening before 1am, um, six of the 11 um, incidents happened either just at 1am or after 1am, um, it's more than 50%. You can certainly go through the incidents, they're all listed there by Sergeant Grant's report. OK, thank you. I think, Miss Sullivan, you were referring to things happening before 3am. Uh, no, right? no, I, I oh. tallied up um, at or before 1am and after 1am and I had seven to six, but if I'm out by one, then I apologise. OK. Right, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Sergeant Neil Grant, now for your closing remarks. And again, please don't introduce anything new at this stage. Sure. Um, just to say that what we're looking for is assurances that the standards are going to be upheld. I appreciate that um, Carl has put in a, a lot of measures since the, the review has been um, submitted, and that's welcomed. Um, but it shouldn't have got this far. We've had, as I say, it, had we not gone for a review, this would have been the third review within two years. And the, what I've seen is we've had an intervention, things have improved, and things have standards have dropped. There's been another intervention, things have improved, and they dropped again. My concern is we have this review. There's a, a written warning, there's assurances made that X, Y and Z will be done and they'll be done for a period of time and the pressure will be off and things return to normal uh, or 
drop again, I should say. Um, I think, given the glass incident, it might be pertinent to go for an alternative other than gra glass for um, for drinking receptacles. I appreciate that these incidents are on the cusp of one o'clock, but I still think um, the safety of patrons and staff would be increased by a closing time of zero one hundred hours. Um, justification being there has been a, a number of violent incidents, sexual assaults as you've been evidenced and I'll not go through the arguments again, but I think opening later invite that more. With regards to a curfew of 2.30, I think that's too late in the day. I think that's playing lip service to it, to be honest. Um, I'd be looking for a, a much earlier curfew than that. Um, but as I say, our concerns are safety of staff, patrons, taking up police time as well with investigations and being selfish about that. And all I'm looking for is for Bar 57, Cali Bar, to be a safe premises for people to go to um, and not causing any drain on the public services. Remember, there's ambulances and things involved as well in these calls that could be going to other things. Um, but I'll not introduce anything new and I'll, I'll leave it to you. Thank you. OK, thank you. So, members, do uh, you require any legal advice from the clerk, first of all? Mr. Croson? Thank you. Just to double check that if uh, curfew suggested, uh, is that enforceable? Yes, that would be a curfew. Yeah. Would you would be, you know, it's something we have seen on other licenses before. Okay, thank you. It would be a variation to the to the license. Thank you. Okay, Miss Sullivan. Um, I would appreciate some legal advice in separate session, please. Okay, thank you. We'll come to that as well. Um, can the deputy clerk please outline the terms of the legal test for the application, please? Certainly, Kavina. So the grounds for review first required to be established, which are that one or more of the conditions to which the premises licence is subject to has been breached or that there's been contravention of one or more of the licence and objectives. In terms of that legal test, the board is satisfied that a ground for review is established, can take such steps as the board consider necessary or appropriate for the purpose of any of the licence and objectives. And those steps are to issue a written warning to the licence holder, to make a variation of the licence and such variation may be applied for such period as the board may determine, to suspend the licence for such period as the board may determine or to revoke the licence. Finally, th there is of course um, the um, review hearing which is in respect of the premises licence. This is what we're hearing. You may make a finding today in relation to any personal licence holder who is or was working on the licence premises in respect of which the premises licence was issued and the board may make a request that a separate hearing in respect of premise license holders be arranged. Okay, thank you. So I've had indications already from Councillor Croson and sorry, Mr. Croson and Ms. Sullivan uh, that they would wish to retire to deliberate. Is that something that other members would be requesting as well at this point? Yes, please. Yes, please, yes, please. Yes, please. OK, thank you. So in that case, we'll suspend the meeting at this point and the board will adjourn to a separate online meeting room. At the end of the adjournment, the deputy clerk will make sure all board members are back in the meeting and then restart the recording. So we'll just switch off the live stream.